we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Good morning, all. We're uh, we're in First Corinthians chapter seven. We're picking it up in seventeen, and I think we'll we'll start a new uh, in, uh, in ESV and see how that runs. Yeah. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep, we've got our Plan B audio system in place. Hopefully it's adequate. We shall see. Um, so beginning, uh, th this is the English Standard Version. We're trying ESV today. Um, close to literal. And um, I'm reading from your screen. Uh, so... Uh, verse 17, First uh, Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. Okay. Now, right so, there, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is my rule in all the churches. So the idea is when Christ calls you, stay where you are until he calls you away from where he's called you um if you are in in this or that or that then uh obviously flee the sinfulness but 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 if your occupation is this then continue that until he calls you different mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes people move too hastily well i gotta go quit my job and reach the world maybe you do but uh, you know, the timing is what matters. You can do, you can do the right thing at the wrong time and still have, and have it be a disaster. Yep. Uh, you, so lead the life the Lord has assigned to you and to that which God has called you. Um, yep. Pretty, pretty strong there for us to just walk in obedience in the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, assignment and calling. Interesting. The Lord assigns and God calls That's right. as if they're two uh, separate and distinct uh, directives. Uh, uh -huh. The assignment of the Lord. Um, well, we know, of course, the Great Commission is the, uh, the overall assignment uh, to which uh, now within that assignment, there are many facets. Um, the one that the, that God himself has called you, our thing is really talking about the uh, direction of the Holy Spirit here within that overall assignment of get the gospel out there uh, as the Lord leads you spiritually by his spirit into that specific aspect um, of that overall mission. That's right. I mean, that's the way I'm reading it, but, you know, perhaps there are, are other um, interpretations. That's right. And so if you if you get saved and you have a secular job and use it as a mission field and then when God calls you away, be obedient to the call. Mm -hmm. um, the, the answer to the question is God send me anywhere you want as long as you don't have a caveat on that. Uh, you know, Lord, don't send me to Hawaii or whatever. Um, you can't have a caveat because God knows best and you don't, but he's willing to reveal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 18. Uh, well, end of 17. This is my rule in all the churches, what he just said. Uh, go where the Lord uh, ultimately calls you. The direction uh, is clear. Uh, go where the Spirit leads. And of course, the Spirit, there may be some tangible evidences given might mention, uh, add to the what we we're talking about before. There might be some tangible evidences that he wants you to do something yeah. um, that uh, is in terms of, you know, contrasting that with a, a pure directive of spiritual dimension only. Uh, so right. something to keep in mind there. Well, let's, let me run on that thought then. Oh. Often people have prophesied over somebody else that you got to go do this or you got to go do that. But don't do it because somebody prophesied over you. Do it because you're called of God and, and have that a confirmation. 
You know, you, God says, I want you to go to Madrid. Uh, the prophet says to you, so you get on a plane, you go to Madrid, and they call the prophet and say, should I stay at the Sheraton or at the Hilton? Because you don't know about the call. So don't go off just on somebody else's call. Mm -hmm. uh, it, get quiet before God, hear what he has to say, and when he wants you to do it, and therefore, uh, then you can do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, verse 18 little gear shift here was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised let him not seek to remove the mark of circumcision okay because in christ there are, there is no circumcised or uncircumcised there's no uh race uh delineation there is no uh, even sex uh, delineation um you're, you're in christ as a believer and a, a, a follower of, of his uh, commandments or you're not Sure. Um, and um, it may you may be uh, you may find blood relatives doing uh, similarly or not. It's it's not it, it's not a uh, it's not um, governed by the um, distinctions that we make in this world. If this physical world is passing away. Uh, it's a, it's a matter of following Christ. Yes or no. Yeah. Uh, let him not uh, seek to remove the mark of circ circumcision. Well, he, you know, this is a very, for Jewish people, this is a very uh, important uh, characteristic. Uh, it's, it's believed, you know, they believe that if, if you're uh, part of the family of God, as they see it, then you are circumcised. You have to be. Um, that's no longer true. I mean, the, that law has, uh, was nailed to the cross with Jesus. Amen. Uh, was anyone at the time of his uh, call uncircumcised? Let him not be uh, circumcised. Let him not seek circumcision. It's just obviously the counterpart to the same statement. And, and Paul had an interesting life. Um, in one of his, in one of the students he was mentoring, he had him circumcised. In one of his students he was mentoring, he did not have him circumcised. So. And that's not because Paul's fickle. It's because he does what he needs to do to reach the gospel into this community or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so um, 19. 19. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Okay. What a statement for a former Jewish leader in training to say. You know, doesn't count. It doesn't count. But doing what God wants you to do is all that counts. Yeah. Yeah. The commandments, of course, beginning with the, the two great commandments of Jesus. Start. That's always a, a great starting point and ending point and everything in between point. So, yeah. um, loving, loving God, loving your neighbors, yourself. Uh, frame it all within that. Uh, verse twenty. Each one should remain in the condition he was called. Were you a bond servant when called? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can, gain your freedom. Avail yourself of the opportunity if it comes up. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. See, Paul's writing all this, and he'll bring it up clearly uh, and specifically, uh, that he believes the time was very short, that uh, uh, live, uh, live as if, uh, you know, today's your last day, so to speak. Uh, but that's true even today. I mean, that's after all, um, uh, what uh, your legacy begins with your last heartbeat, and that could be any time. Your last breath could be any time. So, um, yeah, legacy and destiny. Uh, verse uh, twenty-one. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry, twenty-two. Uh, for he who was called in the Lord as a bond servant is a freed man of the Lord. So you're free in the Lord, whether you're a bond servant in this world or not. For he was called of the Lord. Uh, likewise, he who was uh, free when called is a bondservant of Christ. So uh, to be freed from this world or not, you're, st you're still a bondservant and uh, properly so to the Lord. Um, you were uh, bought with a price. Jesus bought us with his blood. Do not become bondservants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, and here he's, he's talking about uh, freedom versus slavery here, um, let, their, let him remain uh, with God. That's the thing. 
and um, you know the opportunity. So that's 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 what's important. Philemon and Philemon is a story of a slave of a bond servant that runs away from his master and gets saved, and Paul sends him back as a brother, not just as a bond servant anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, how amazing it is when when someone comes to Christ, how it changes all the relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Verse twenty five. Uh, under the category uh, unmarried and widowed, what of them? Uh, now concerning the betrothed, the engaged, I have no command from the Lord, but I give you my judgment as one who, by the Lord's mercy, is trustworthy. Okay, so the, now this he's stating here this is his opinion, obviously, it's by my judgment. So, and I'm trustworthy. <laughs> yeah, um, it's pretty. Uh, it, 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 it's it's not surprising that Paul was a Jew and argued as a Jew, um, but that's not an uncommon statement. Now, this isn't the Lord's thought. This is my thought, but I'm pretty trustworthy. Sure. I'm trust yes, he is. <laughs> yes. Verse 26. I think that in view of the present distress, he's speaking generally of the uh, uh, stresses of everyday life here, it is good for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. Okay. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a betrothed woman marries, she has not sinned. Okay. Also, the present distress is amplifying in Paul's day uh, as far as persecution from the Romans. So. Uh, and we can think there is present distress in 2023, and that's true. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea is be what God would have you to be. If God calls you to be married, be married. If God does, calls you to be single, be single. But whatever you do, serve and honor the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not a sin to marry, but he's recommending that. You just uh, keep the current... Um, um, state of your relationships as they are, assuming they are, of course, uh, holy. Yes. Um, see, we'll be, uh, yeah. Uh, this is what I mean, brothers. Verse 29. He's not sent. Yeah, I'm sorry. Those. Yeah. Uh, sure. This is what I mean, brothers. Uh, the appointed time is grown very short. From sorry, now on, sorry. let sorry, those. Fred. Yeah. 20. Sorry. We didn't finish 28. 28, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, you have not seen, but, right. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles. This, yeah, this is a good point to make that uh, this is the whole deal. If you're married, he sees it as a, a complexity that uh, can increase troubles that we already have plenty of. Um, and he's trying to spare us. It says in so many words in 28. So in uh, 29, um, the appointed time has grown very short. It's easing very, very short. He's thinking uh, the Lord's return is imminent. Um, from now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I think this is one of those things that gets a little bit um, diluted by translation from the original languages. It's essentially, you know, let life go on. Um, again, if, as long as it's, it's not uh, transgressing uh, the word, the laws of God, uh, let it continue. Do, do, don't give it um, the priority that you might give it if you think you're going to be around to a ripe old age where you might uh, be planning for future life. Uh, if, if from his point of view, he just doesn't think it's it's there. So that um, things are going to wind up here faster than you know, and <laughs> you don't need to be caught up in things of the world uh, with um, eternity knocking at the door. Right. For this, yeah, and no enjoy. 
the present, yeah, last sentence, for the present form of this world is passing away. And scroll, scroll, scroll. Verse 32. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife. Happy wife, happy life. And his interests are divided. The unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in bond and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, i.e. how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. That should be priority. Yes. Always. Well, verse 36. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his betrothed, if his passions are strong and he has to be, uh, and it has to be, let him do as he wishes. Let them marry. It is no sin. But whoever is firmly established in his heart, being under no necessity, but having his desire under control, and is determined in his heart to keep her as his, well, my sorry, my computer's not scrolling cooperatively here. Uh, let's see. So um, keep her as his betrothed, he will do well. So then he who marries his, he who marries his betrothed does well. And he who refrains from marriage will do even better. Again, Paul's opinion. Okay. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Verse 39. What is with my computer? I'm very sorry, folks. My computer is not behaving today. Verse 39. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she's free to be married to whom she wishes only in the Lord. Yet my judgment is she's happier if she remains as she is, and I think I have the Spirit of God. Um, by the way, this is not requesting that wives kill off their husbands. That's not what... <laughs> um, but when he dies, and it's not... I mean, childbirth, there was a lot of death in childbirth in those days, and there still is, but... Um, Typically, a man married a woman much younger than him, and so the husband dies off first because he, he's older. Uh, and then uh, then she's free to look up and say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to remarry, or do you want me to stay, uh, stay a widow? And the answer is, I can't answer that for you, but uh, from my life, says Paul, it is better for you to be single. Uh, I would have loved to have uh, Paul and Peter write this chapter uh, side by side because Peter was married in his ministry and other, and it says the Lord's brothers were also, which is kind of an amazing insight. Mm -hmm. but, um, so what are we to do? We're to do what God calls us to do. We're to live godly, moral lives, whether we're uh, married or not. If uh, God has called you to celibacy, be obedient. If God has called you to temporary celibacy, then be obedient. If God has called you to marry, be obedient. And by the way, God is only calling you to marry somebody who is a believer. He's never calling you. There is no, uh, there is no dating evangelism in the scripture. Uh, lo share the love of Jesus and then figure out who it is that God would have you to uh most effectively change the world with, and then that works. So Paul is um, content in his single life, and in fact, um, passionate about his single life. He is called to be not married, and uh, but he understands that some people aren't as, uh, uh, <laughs> some people don't have that gift, and therefore go ahead and get married uh, to the one that God is happy to marry. Mm -hmm. Kind of, a, uh, and you can just imagine that in Corinth, they're thinking, 
okay, I got one wife at home, but you know, there's a temple prostitute. There's this person and there's, there's this other married person. And, and no, don't live like the world lives, but live as Christ and have you to live. Right. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that you, that you have a plan for our lives and we need to earnestly seek you. Uh, transform me so I can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you again for your word, your spirit, uh, and the direction that uh, you afford us here. Uh, help us stay the straight and narrow according to your calling, yes. uh, your direction. Uh, that's all that's important. It's really uh, the, the thing that we need to focus on and stick with. And we pray for your continued uh, direction that we might live lives that glorify you in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. Amen. Have a good day, all. Bye-bye. Have a good one.